The Syllabus Rainbow Fish. What is it? Where does it come from? And how do you keep it happy in a glass box? Well, let's take a look. This rainbow fish is known by a Latin name that there's no way I can pronounce it. I'll just butcher the heck out of it. But uh, it's in the title of the video and, uh, and in the description, so you can do a simple Google search and if you want to search it by its Latin name. The easiest way to say where this fish comes from is for me to just say it comes from Indonesia. Uh, it's up near the equator and it does come from a fairly large island but it is still an island. In fact the island used to be called Syllabes and that's how this rainbow got its common name. Um, on the ICUN red list this fish is listed as vulnerable meaning its, it's population is holding its own but if there was any kind of catastrophic event, this fish doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. So it is vulnerable to, you know, if problems arise, it could hurt this species. On the island itself, these fish come from a varied habitat. They're not just found in one particular niche. They're kind of all over. So to us, that just means that it's an adaptable fish. And in my keeping of this fish, I found it to be true because I've kept it a couple different ways and it's done just fine. As far as temperature goes for this fish, being that they're near the equator, you would think you need to keep them pretty warm. But the fact is, mid-70s mid is about perfect for these fish. My early research I did back in the day when I first started keeping them was the perfect breeding temperature for this fish was 73 degrees. I keep them a little warmer, not because I don't disagree or I don't agree with that. It's just simply due to the fact that the tank, the room that the tank I keep them in is warmer than that. So the fish you're seeing in the video are actually kept right around 76 degrees and they spawn for me every morning. Here's probably the one water parameter you do have to pay attention to with this fish. If you're one of those lucky people out on the west coast that has that almost perfect RO water right out of the tap, you're going to have to mineralize your water. This is not a soft water fish. It really doesn't do very well in soft water. Um, I, I can't say why. I just know that this fish doesn't do well in low pH soft water. You're going to want a, a pH above 7 with some minerals in it. The, the fish appreciates it. Um, you, you don't have to go to an extreme, but you know, something over 7.0 in the pH and you know, moderate, moderately hard in the water. As far as tank size goes, these fish don't really get that big. They, they max out right around the three inch mark. So they're, they're not big, but they are swimmers. They, they appreciate some room. Uh, I, I bred this fish in 20 gallon tanks. I've actually bred them in 10 gallon tanks and uh, I, I, I think that was a mistake. I, I actually prefer to, to really breed them in a 20 long. Uh, this particular setup you're looking at is a 40 breeder and uh, there's two males and three females and that seems like perfect for them really. Tank mates Anything that's appropriate for, you know, that would be considered a community type fish. Uh, since they stay kind of small at three inches, you know, you don't want to put them in with anything that's going to eat them, of course. Uh, they really don't bother any other fish. They, they're they not really nippy. But due to water conditions, I wouldn't keep them with anything like an angelfish. But, yeah, they... They get along just fine with just about anything for the most part. I, I've actually have kept them with tiger barbs. They're, they're pretty quick. They, they can get out of danger pretty fast. As far as the de decor or you know how you want to set the tank up, if you really want to see the colors in this fish and, and really get that bright display they have, they, they do appreciate a planted tank. And in what they want to do when they're spawning is they, they, they like to just scatter their eggs in fine leaf plants. They, they really do love a planted tank. 
and whether you want to spawn this fish or not if you really want to see those colors put them in a planted tank they don't have to be real plants they can be fake but they they just like that security of having a bunch of stuff around them as far as foods go they are a predator they don't have the largest mouth in the world but they'll eat darn near any prepared aquarium food that's out there um, in, in the cases if you're if you're using frozen bloodworms that are the really big style maybe that's not maybe you should go with a different brand because uh, their, their mouths aren't huge uh, but yeah any type of commercial food I, I, I haven't found anything they don't eat to be honest with you I, I do keep them on a on a steady flake diet just a standard you know regular flake and then they get their treats whether it's uh, frozen brine shrimp frozen blood worms uh, myas or myasis shrimp um, freeze-dried tube effects worms uh, I don't know there's all kinds of things <laughs> I, I feed them a lot of different stuff that kind of keeps them happy but yeah they're they're not finicky they're, they're not specialized feeders in any way. There's nothing special you got to do with them. Any prepared aquarium food should do it. Alright, now for the fun stuff. If you keep this fish happy, I guarantee you they're spawning in, their ta in, in your tank. You may not see any fry because they're super tiny, doggone microscopic. But I guarantee you they're spawning. They're scattering those eggs around fish are either eating the eggs or whatever but that they are spawning uh, there's no real trick to spawning this fish that's the easy part uh, as long as they're fed well and they're left to their own devices they're gonna lay eggs oh and of course you gotta have male and female uh, the sexual dimorphism in them is pretty obvious it's pretty easy uh, Alright, I screwed that up. Anyways, to tell male or female, uh, it's, it's pretty simple. The males have that big split dorsal with the long trailers. They're the ones always showing. If you're in your local pet shop and you, you don't see one with those long trailers, chances are it's a female. Uh, females are kind of cool in their own right, but without that, but this species is all about that male you know strutting his stuff and spreading them fins out that's what makes this fish so popular so if you don't see that and you don't see any that are obviously have that then just don't buy them and wait till next time i i actually am always looking out for females because i like breeding this fish so you know the the pet shops are still going to sell them but yeah it's pretty simple so as long as you have a pair you're you're getting eggs and uh, that's the easy part. The hard part comes in on how, how do you get to the eggs to harvest them to, to actually be able to raise fry, which is another whole dilemma in and of itself. That is the hard part of breeding this fish. All right, there's two types of ways to or popular ways of breeding this fish and you can see here in the video I have just a Tupperware container with some yarn it mimics the plants uh, I don't keep in this tank there are no other fine leaf plants there's some Java fern in there but that's it and they won't lay their eggs in Java fern because the leaves are broad and there's they, they want that fine leaf dense you know type of medium to lay their eggs in so I provide that using yarn and we, we call it a spawning mop and it's a pretty popular method for breeding egg scatterers and you can see they, they go in it and they do their thing and they pop back out and once every few days or so I'll pull that yarn out of there and I'll place it in another tank and allow the eggs to incubate there um, the eggs are small well to me they're small uh, 
there, I, I don't do a lot of egg scatterers, so maybe I'm not the best for comparison wise, but they're, they're about the size of an angelfish egg. The only thing is, is that the embryos are actually inside the egg, which is different than cichlids like an angelfish per se where the embryos develop kind of outside the egg the egg be kind of comes the yolk sac and the you know they become wigglers right away uh these guys man they they the fish are literally in the egg and if you use a magnifying glass and, and look at the eggs uh after a couple days you will see the fish actually move around inside the egg it is the coolest thing ever um, you know, coming from a cichlid guy, which I was for all that time, where you never really got to see that. You don't see that in mouth brooding cichlids. You don't see that in, you know, angelfish or a pistogramma. Even with the pistos and stuff, generally you don't get to see the eggs anyways. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of neat. Anyways, what the heck was I talking about? Hold on, let me collect my thoughts. All right, so you take the spawning mop, you put it in another tank. Uh, it, it's your choice if you want to pick the eggs off of the spawning mop. I don't, but if you have the patience and the good eyesight to do so, you can. Um, I just simply put the whole mop in the tank, add a little methylene blue just in case, because the spawning mop does tend to hold a little bit of detritus and uneaten food and stuff, and I don't want eggs to fungus up. But, uh, yeah, that, that's a personal choice that, that you make. It's all good, however you want to do it. Um, it. It's neat, you know, I check the eggs every day, you know, see how they're doing. Um, <clears throat> then the, the hard part comes is once the eggs hatch, which can vary greatly depending on temperature. And I generally don't have a heater in my... Uh, incubating tanks so it just depends on the weather outside it can be days difference um, but feeding the, the fry once they hatch out and they're free swimming uh, you're gonna have to have cultures of infants infusoria you know green water you you need that microscopic life to to get them started and then once they're free swimming and eating in infusoria or you know stuff in green water yada yada it, it usually takes about a week or so before you can get them on you know larger live foods like baby brine shrimp and things like that so that's the one way to do it is just pull the spawning mop out and away you go there's another way to do it, and I haven't personally tried this, but I want to once I have my fish room back up and running again, is to get several mature tanks, well planted, that have a lot of life in them. I'm talking about aged tanks with a lot of mulm in them, a lot of live plants, uh, good aged tanks that have all kinds of detritus worms in them you know to the point go ahead and let them go green if you want to to the point where they're almost gross looking you know they're healthy you know don't get me wrong you know they're not full of ammonia or anything but they just they're they're old established tanks and then all you have to do is play musical fish you get a group say you know, I, I prefer the two males to three females. That's just my personal choice. You could probably do it with one male and two females. You probably could even do it with a pair. Uh, the, these fish aren't super aggressive in their spawning, so you could probably get away with a pair. I, I've never tried it that way, but you probably could do it. And then you just play musical fish. If you have two or three of these tanks, then you, you, you take your, your breeders and you put them in that established tank that's got all that microfauna in it already 
and let them do their thing and after about five days or so catch them out of there and put them in another established tank with all that microfauna and all that other stuff and just leave that other tank alone and the the eggs will hatch and they're in theory there should be enough food in that tank to get those fish to where they're big enough to where they can take something you know bigger that way you don't have to worry about you know culturing all these micro foods this is a theory I haven't tried it myself but I, I know people that have had had have had success with that all right I hope I made sense I, I hope this all made sense in closing the the silly beast rainbow fish is probably my favorite rainbow fish it was the first one I was ever introduced to um, I am planning on doing some experimentation with some of the other ones uh, all right I screwed that up too but anyways we'll start over in closing the syllabus rainbow fish is probably one of the best introductions you're ever going to get into the pseudo mcgill type rainbow fish you know the thread fins and the, the blue eyes well that's killy fish uh, anyways those type of fish uh, th this is an easy one to start with it's adaptable all right you want to keep it mid 70s right around you know 70 or mid 70s somewhere in there uh, you you want to have some minerals in the water you know you want to be above 7.0 with this fish for sure uh, 7.5 would be even better uh, food wise they're highly adaptable no nothing to deal with there aggression I, I never kept this fish as a pair so I, I don't know if a, a pair is a bad thing or not I, I personally don't know I wish I did if you do know feel free to comment but I, I've never kept it in a pair uh, it really doesn't mess with a whole lot of other fish <clears throat> and I, I haven't really found a whole lot of other fish that mess with it, it it's quick enough that it, it just gets out of the area if something's going on it don't like it does need room uh, I do not recommend this and I do not recommend this fish in anything under a 20 long um, preferably a 40 breeder or even bigger even though it's a small fish it only tops out at three inches it, it does like to swim it, 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 it likes to get around and it definitely enjoys its cover it, it shows best color wise and and the way the fish acts will it will act best in a planted type tank um, it, it's not going to do real well in like a rockscape that you would do for an African cichlid per se so anyways I, I hope this helps um, I, I really do truly hope this helps and if you have any other suggestions or things I missed which I'm very good at I tend to forget stuff when I do these uh, leave them in the comments and uh, thanks guys you guys all have a good night later